There is a city in China. It has 2.5 million residents. Pretty small city in scale in China, right? But this city is about to install enough wind generation to power the entire country of Norway, which has five and a half million people. And what I realized was something interesting. This city wants to make electricity virtually free. Now, why would they do this? Well, there's one very good reason. Manufacturing, the biggest cost, the biggest ongoing cost, is electricity. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. Thank you for tuning in. Here on this channel, I find the this kind of news very fascinating. Now, there was a report recently from Credit Suisse saying the price of electricity globally will be marginal in 2050. They're basically saying it will be virtually free in 2050, thanks to renewable energy. Now, this is in line with comments from, say, Tony Sieber and Rethink X. He made that comment about 10 years ago. And this is the first time the media has actually said, actually, it looks like this will happen at some point. It may not happen when they say. I do believe, though I'm committed to 100% belief that this is the only possible outcome for where things are headed. But let's move on from that. Let's focus on where we're at right now. And that is the cost of installing wind generation is falling every single year, making wind generation actually significantly more viable per dollar. The return on wind now is the lowest cost for any form of electricity in the world. Chow Zhou in China's Guangdong province is going to build an offshore wind farm so big that it could power, in fact, not just Norway, but more than Norway. So the city is going to start work on a 43.3 gigawatt offshore wind farm before 2025, according to the city's five-year plan, which has been published online according to Electric. The plan does not disclose how much the offshore wind farm will cost. The city of Chaozhou will build the wind farm between 47 and 115 miles off the city's coast on the Taiwan Strait, where there is quite a lot of wind. The area has unique topographical features that mean wind will be strong enough to run the turbines for 3,800 to 4,300 hours per year, or 43 to 49% of the time, which is a very high utilization rate, says Bloomberg. And realistically, to be honest, if you've got this straight near you, you might as well use it because there's a lot of wind there, a hell of a lot of wind there. And when you look at some of these wind turbines that are coming out now, I mean, they're bigger than a, a football field. They are absolutely enormous. The amount of wind power you can get from a single turbine now is actually enough to power about 50,000 homes. That's crazy. On the 17th of October, Electric reported that a 13.6 megawatt offshore wind turbine with a record-breaking rotor diameter of 252 meters debuted in China ahead of the country's 20th party congress in Beijing. Now, that was a record at the time, but I believe now companies are saying they've reached 270 meters in diameter. That's crazy. Now, Simon Evans reported that China has built more offshore wind capacity in 2021 than the rest of the world managed in the last five years put together. That's one of the great values of having a, a, you know, a country where regulation is, well, sometimes it's stifling, but in other areas, right, such as generating energy, well, China just says, do it, get it done, do it now, do it now. And for example, here in Australia, it's not even legal to put an offshore wind farm in. You can't legally do it. Even though there's companies clamoring here to do it, there's companies right now I've heard about that, that are trying desperately to get the government to allow them to do it. The Australian government, they're pretty backwards. Regulation, regulation, regulation. There's no offshore wind. Look at the Chinese. They're pouring it on, pouring it on, pouring it on because it's so efficient. And the other great thing is that in 2021, China added more than twice as much wind generation as the IEA forecast. The IEA is, well, they're always wrong. They always under forecast, but still more than twice as much. That's crazy. What that meant is that in 2021, China had 26 gigawatt hours of wind generation, which accounted for more than half the world's 54 gigawatts. Now, after this year, we'll be looking at a figure closer to probably 70 to 80 gigawatts, and it's going to balloon out from there. There's so many massive projects that are planned soon. 
Now, China has connected more offshore wind generation capacity in 2021 because it needs more energy for manufacturing. And its population is urbanizing really quickly, right? And they don't want coal. They really don't want coal. I know, I know they have coal plants, but the reality is coal plants are more expensive than these wind generation farms are now. So it makes sense to build these massive wind generation, wind generation offshore plants. Now, China's going big, but it doesn't have a very it doesn't have a very optimistic look on its own energy. It's saying it can't really be carbon neutral until maybe 2050 to 2060. That's a long way away. Now, I don't believe that's true. For example, here in Australia, we've announced that our completely coal dependent country is going to be completely rid of coal within the next five to 10 years. Coal power plants, the biggest one in Australia, just shut down, the biggest one here. And there's so many renewable energy projects that have been announced in Australia because frankly, it's cheaper. Now, Oxford University agrees with me. They've said that if the world moves to renewable energy, it will save $10 trillion. The faster we do it, the more money we save. Interestingly, here in Australia, the price of energy has gone up recently. I'm sure you've all heard that, right? It's happening in a lot of different countries. But there's one state in Australia, Canberra, our capital, right? No one ever talks about Canberra. It's sort of a forgotten place. But that's the only place in Australia where the cost of energy has not increased. And it's the only state in Australia which runs completely 100% on renewable energy. Isn't that an interesting coincidence? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.